So welcome to the next lecture of our module association learning and we are talking about a priori algorithm. In this lecture we'll be talking about how we can code this algorithm in our systems. Okay. So let's start our lecture. So we have these libraries numpy, pandas, matplotlib and that's our data. So the data we are using is, is a mall data. Okay. I'll show you what data we have. So for that, let's wait for data to get load. Okay, so our data is loaded now. So let's uh, let's check our data. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so that's the data we have. So you can see that we are given number of transitions and the items a person has brought. Okay, so that's our data. And now you can see that we are given the transaction and the items a person has bought from that particular mall. So you can see that we have transaction 1. So in transaction 1, the person has bought bread only. In transaction 2, there were two items that were bought which were Scandinavian and other one also was Scandinavian. Then in third transaction, we have hot chocolate, jam and cookies. So basically what we are given is we are given the date, the time, the transaction number and the items that were bought in that particular transaction and we'll be using this data only and we'll find out the association between the items that are present in the mall so that based on that association of the items the marketing department or the sales department of that particular mall can prepare their schemes, their marketing strategies and the offers for the customer so that they can increase their sales. So we'll be analyzing the customer behavior and we'll be preparing our strategies as per that. Also let's check the data info. Okay. So that's the data info we have. Okay. For, so We'll also check that whether we have any null values in our data or not. So we have to pre-process our data. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll lower all these words items because there can be a case that if we have a bread capital B R E D and small capital B R E D, then it will consider it as a different object or a different item. So for that, what we'll do is we'll say data and then we are talking about item column, right? So it's item. And then we say that we want our data item column so to have a value with string dot lower. Okay. And then let's check the data that is we whether we have any null values or not. Okay. And then we have to count the value. Okay, so value counts. Okay, let's go. So you can see that we have 786 values which are having a non value that is a null value in the item column, and 20,507 entries are just perfect. So we have to drop those values which are having null value in it. So for that we will simply use drop. So data equals to data dot drop. What we want to drop is we want to drop those entries in the item column where we have null value. So we'll say data and in data which column we are talking about we are talking about the item column. So data dot item equals to none and we have to drop the index also that particular entry with number okay mm, sorry yeah so here we go now what data we have is the data we have is basically is not having any null values within it it's completely fine to move on let me show you it again okay so that's the data uh, the changes have been made in the entry numbers where we were having the null values with us. Now we'll explore our data. So let's see the total number of items we have in our data. First of all, check the 
total count that is a unique count of the items we have so for that what we will say is data item right because we are talking about the item column we are only interested in that and we say that how many unique values it had so for that we use n unique sorry so we have total of 94 unique items in our supermarket or in our data we are given also we can see that what are those unique values that we have for that we use unique simply right so these are the 94 items that we have in our data given to us and we'll be finding out associations between these 94 values right if you have to do it manually then it will take a very long time because you have to find out the correlation between each of this we have to make pairs two pair three pair follow the association so it's very uh, hazardous work or so it's very difficult task to do so that's why this algorithm works completely fine when we have to do such kind of work you can also check the total items we have right okay so the total items purchased were 2507 as I have shown you above. So this is the total number of items being purchased by the customers. Now let me show you which items were sold or purchased by the customers the most. For that we will use group by. So we will say data dot group by and how I want to group it I want to group my data based on the item column right and I'll say the size of that particular entry I'll sort it sorry I'll sort it as per the decreasing order so we'll say ascending equals to false by default it's true that means sort it in an ascending order but i want to have it in a descending order okay so these are the top 20 items i have printed and you can see that the item coffee is being purchased the most by the customers then bread then tea then cake and so on right you can also plot this particular data and can visualize it in a much better way for that you just need to do is dot plot okay uh, not just do it let's do it in the next line okay so for that you have to say dot plot you want to plot this particular value and what kind of graph you want we want a bar graph because it's very easy to understand when we are working on the count of the values and then keeping all the things aside we can simply so you can see that's our graph these items these are the top 20 most purchased items as per the transaction data we have so coffee is the most purchased item by the customers then bread then tea then cake right so this is how we can visualize the data we have now we'll understand how this data works okay so for that what i'll do is i'll separate out i'll uh, okay so for that what i'll do is the data we are given is we have the transaction number in different in different entries so what i'll do is i'll make this transaction as a row and i'll sum up all these items being sold to that particular transaction in one entry only so that we can easily access our data okay so for that what I'll do is let's name it as combined data okay so combined data equals to pd dot data frame sorry data frame and then what we have is we'll say that I want to group by my items with respect to the transaction and the items we have okay so we'll say that in the items sorry i want the column items right and what data i want in that column is 
the data I already have, I'll group by it based on the transaction and the items. So transaction. Okay, this is our old data and the new data we are making it will say that we'll put all these items in a column items right and in the previous data the column which were which we were having was the item okay so i am grouping up my items based on the transaction number and it has to be unique so the unique transaction number i'll group by the items i have then i also want the items count that we have in that particular transaction so for that what i'll do is I'll again copy this I'll say that I want the items count so items count that will be my another column and there I want the number of the items unique items I have in that particular transaction okay so my data is prepared now also i have to reset the index values because in that case the values will change because you can see that here we have the index value is 0 1 2 and if we club this then after one will be having next third index so i don't want it to happen so for that we'll rearrange the index values of ours so we'll say combine data dot reset index and we have to set it as true okay and then i'll print the top 10 values so that you can see how the data is being combined so now here it is you can see that now we have only one transaction number and with respect to that we have a list of items we have Earlier in the data given above, let me show you that also. Wait a second. Let's print out the previous data that we were having. So data dot head 20. So in the previous data, you can see that we have the entries based on the items we have. But the new data we have prepared is we have entries based on the transaction number and the items that is here you can see these items are now clubbed to a single entry in a list so we have three columns the transaction number items and the item count right also let let me show you how we can get more information from our data we can find out the range or the date given to us right so we can see that for how long we are collecting this data for that in data column in data we have date column so data date right so the minimum date we have so the data we are given is it's from 30th of October 2016 and similarly we can find that Till which date we are given this data so we are having a data till 9th of april 2017 let's check the total number of days we have so we'll simply can use n unique so it's that much simple so we have a total of 159 days data with us right so these transactions that we are given or the total items we have sold we are given a data from 30th of october 2016 till 9 of april 2017 so the total days we are talking about is 159 so this was how we can handle our data we have prepared our data processed it and combined into such forms so that we can feed to our models and we have find out some explorations over our data intuitions based on it so this is how we work on such data and in the next coming lecture i'll show you how this data is finally going to be used to train our a priori algorithm and then we'll perform the association over it
what we'll do is we'll build up our priori algorithm using the association matrices that we have. So first of all, we have to import our libraries. So for that, go from ML extend. Okay, that's a library that you have to download so that you can run your a priori from that. So ML extend frequent patterns will import a priori and similarly using the same library we'll import our association rules that we have so association rules right right sorry it's extend yep so we have imported our libraries we have our a priori and association rules with us and now we have to transform our data before applying the a priori algorithm for that what I want to do is I have to prepare my data so that at each entry level I have the index as a transaction number and then I have columns with each column representing a data item so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to prepare a vector form so that if a transaction has a particular item then it will have one otherwise that particular entry will be zero. So for that let's prepare our data. So let's say dt okay. So dt equals to data dot we have to group by our data okay. So what we want to group by, we want to group by both transaction and items based on the items we have. Okay, so we'll say group by using transaction and the item column. Then prepare the items as such based on the count okay let's print it as well so now you can see that initially we were having transaction one then item we have introduced the count as well but what we are doing is we are group grouping the transaction and item and then we are putting up the item count as well so you can see that initially we were having two entries for Scandinavian but now we have only one entry for Scandinavian and we have our item count as well okay and now we'll prepare the vector form as I was telling you about so for that what we'll do is dt equals to dt dot unstack okay let me show you what I mean to say so, okay so now this is the kind of data I want. We have the transaction number with us. So if this, uh, suppose we are given this transaction number and in this column, suppose if it was having break bread. So this entry would have been marked one and otherwise it would have been zero. So it's initially given right now as null, but we want to convert it to as a 10 form so that we can feed it to our models so for that what I'll do is I'll say dt equals to sorry dt equals to dt dot reset the index values and then set index as per the transactions that we have right so let me show you the changes that I am telling you about. So our index value will be according to the transactions that we have. Right? Dt dot. Okay. So now these index values are the transaction values that we have. And now also we have to fill this null values with 0. So dt equals to dt dot fill na with a 0 and then dt dot head okay so that's the data now we have 
so we have zero if that particular item is not present in the transaction and one if that particular data is present in the transaction okay so for that what i have to do is i have to encode the data like such so i'll say encode let's name it as unix okay so all the data will pass it over here and if my data is less than equal to zero sorry then return zero and if it's greater than equal to one don't worry the x value will won't be less than zero it will be equal to 0.0, .0 only and why greater than one for example scandinavian it will be having two entries suppose this was present in transaction two and suppose this column is a scandinavian column then in that position it will be having two but i want a sparse metric so i'll say zero or one so if i have a value greater than one or equal to one then return one only right then dt equals to dt dot now i want to apply this function over all the units that i have so i'll say encode units so this function will apply over all the data entries we have right let me show you the data again so dt dot head okay so now we have zero only now these are the matrices that i have already explained you in the previous video support confidence lift leverage so for that what i'll say i'll say frequent items equals to a priori and then i'll pass on my data dt and which conditions as i have told you in the lecture that we are considering a support minimum support equal to 2 so here i'll say that i am considering a minimum support of 0.01 okay and i'll use the column names as well that we have equals to true right so let's apply the priori okay it's giving an error let me check it again okay sorry it's min support yep so we have applied the priori over our data right the steps we have performed in the intuition video and after reaching to a final superset we'll apply the matrices we'll check the confidence we'll check the support again so now these matrices are this one support confidence lift leverage and conviction okay so after applying the priori we have the supersets with us and we'll be applying these metrics over there and then we'll find the association from this data as simple as that let me copy this okay so now it's time to apply the association over there so i'll say we have to prepare the rules so rules will be according to the association so association rules that we have already imported and i'll say the frequent items applying over it and then which metric i am following i am following the lift metric okay and then I have to set the min threshold that what minimum value I want my data to have in this particular matrix. As in that case, I have considered confidence in the code. I am considering the lift. And in the intuition, as I have told you that I am considering a minimum support value of 60%. In this case, I'll be considering a minimum support, minimum threshold value for lift to be 1. And lift can be in the range 0 to infinity. Okay. So rules dot head. Okay, so that's the kind of pair we are having with us. And now let's refine our data, refine our results. So I'll say I want only that data in which I have the rule where lift is equals to greater than equal to 1 and 
where the confidence value is more than 50%. So rules and then I'll be accessing this confidence column, right? So confidence and it should be greater than equal to 50%, right? So 0 0.5 so okay rules right actually it's a data so we have to mention the data as well data frame so okay so that's the final data we have which results we are talking about so let me show you considering the particular example of a toast and a coffee as you can see here now you can see that we have a support value of 0.023 confidence of this that means 70.44 percent of all toast transaction contain coffee right and similarly the other intuitions so the value of lift in that case is 1.47 that means coffee is 1.47 times more likely to be bought by the customers who buy toast compared to the default likelihood of the sales so if a person is buying a toast then the purchase of coffee is 1.47 times higher than those customers who only purchase coffee right so this is how we develop intuitions based on the final matrices we have this is how we find out the final pairs using the a priori right so this was all about the association rule mining and the working of a priori algorithm so you yeah, are good to go to find the relations and the data you have and prepare the strategies that you want. So it's a very real world example that I have shown you in this particular lecture. I hope you would have understood all the concepts clearly. So best of luck and keep following.